Okay, so <clears throat> first of all, thank you so much for introduction and thank you for having me here. Um, this is my LinkedIn. If you would like to, if someone would like to uh, add me to your network, welcome. I'm always welcome for uh, new connections. About myself, really quickly, I'm chief architect at Prophecy. Um, before that was a DevOps architect, before that was a cloud architect, also was a head of, head of DevOps. I have a huge experience working with different clouds, different teams and different um, companies. And here at Prophecy, um, I am trying to, uh, to bring the FinOps uh, into the table and trying to help um, our customers to, uh, to make their cloud as cost efficient as possible. Um, about ourselves, uh, about uh, uh, about our company, we are um, uh, Israeli DevOps boutique company. Means that we we are providing DevOps as a service services to our customers, and um, as a part of this uh, involvement, um, we thought that there is a huge need for cloud cost optimization for our customers. Um, as a result, we started to thinking about how to help our customers to achieve their uh, cloud cost optimization. And um, today I want to introduce to you a very nice uh, project that we built. It's called the Prophecy Labs, and we will talk about FinOps today, and we will talk about this product. I will show you a quick demo and we'll answer on your questions. So let's begin. First of all, what's the FinOps, which is the financial operations? Um, uh, you need to know that a couple of years ago, actually two years ago, the uh, FinOps.org was uh, created, which is the uh, FinOps Foundation. Uh, it's a non-profit organization that's trying to establish establish a principles, establish um, uh, a FinOps role and FinOps goals. Uh, you can visit the FinOps.org website to read more about the uh, FinOps Foundation organization and about uh, what the FinOps is. And um, I uh, actually borrowed from the website a very beautiful and short explanation of what FinOps is and what are the principles of FinOps. So what's, what's FinOps? All of you remember that before the clouds, we had the on-prem and co-locations and the process of getting the new hardware was pretty much straightforward. You need to add more service to your, uh, to your data center. You actually go into financial um, organization to your um, thing guys and they're doing the procurement uh, for you you basically saying what do you want to to get they're trying to get the, the best price and once once they uh, found who's going to to give you the hardware they're paying for it and the process was very very um uh, it, it was very long it was taking a long amount of time in order to get the new hardware to your uh, to your website. And of course that model was, uh, wasn't ideal. Um, it was very complicated to grow uh, in that model. And um, a lot of companies had issues with, uh, with uh, not enough uh, space or, um, and they need to move to another data center or they need to, to add more service and so on and so on. Um, but the process of procurement was working perfectly. There was no issues with that. There was a, financial organization which was handling all the all the financial aspect of the of the business and they knew who and which team what team what amount of service what kind of service they own so they knew who owns what kind of resources then the clouds came up and we all started to work with the clouds and i'm as a devops engineer was was very happy uh, leveraging all the all the beauty of the clouds was creating and, and, and deleting the resources there. Um, well, what's wrong with that, uh, with the clouds, is that the procurement process is broken. It means that any DevOps engineer can basically request a resource, he will get it. Then the guys are uh, forgetting to delete the resources, those resources um, spending money. Uh, and the issue was that companies and business doesn't know uh doesn't know the uh, what amount of money they're spending uh, who is spending what can be what can be decreased and so on 
as a result of that need, the FinOps, FinOps uh, uh, processes were introduced. And uh, the principles of the FinOps is basically the teams need to collaborate, the DevOps team need to collaborate with the financial financial uh, organization with the uh, fin guys um the um, uh, the finops is not about the cloud cost optimization finops is about buying what you need is basically about paying only for the things that you need it doesn't mean that you need to buy the cheaper things it just needs uh, means that you need to choose carefully and you, you need to think about future you need to think about your uh, cloud cost uh, spendings um yeah so in general um what the finops says is that each company should have a organization or engineer within the company which will be responsible for um resources for actually buying the resources for tracking the resources the main phases of finops is inform uh, which is the visibility of your resources which is uh, uh, inform about the pricing, optimize, which is to optimize your your resources, and the third one is the operate, which means that to uh, track your resources, track the the cost on your resources, and and so on. So quickly, this is the FinOps. Nothing um, very special. It's the methodology, um, having the dedicated engineer or role within your company. Who will be responsible for looking uh, for cloud costs for your resources um, and will be helping you to optimize all of that now the next one what i want to uh, to talk about is the trends i found this uh, graph it's um, finop jobs uh, jobs trends in uk as you see in 2019 there was no finop jobs at all in uk and then it started to pop up and it's growing. So we are all seeing the new market. It's a new market um, that's growing on our eyes. There was the same, it was the same story about DevOps engineers when there was no DevOps engineers at all. And then it started to pop up. Same thing is happening for FinOps. There was no vacancies, uh, jobs for FinOps. And now you have uh, tons of them and it's growing. It's going to be bigger and bigger from each year. So I'm just saying that the trend is clear. We're going to FinOps and more and more companies will be willing to get the FinOps. You probably also thinking that, okay, uh, cloud cost is always about the automation. We can simply automate everything and it will help us to, to optimize uh, the cloud cost, uh, which is true from one, from one side. But based on this graph, if you will take a look on it, you see that almost half of the companies are not automate uh, doesn't have the automation at all no automation at all um they're only moving there um it means that as i said to you half of the companies has no automation at all um so uh, automation is a big is the big um a big thing in the future but it will take a lot of time for companies to automate whatever they have uh, while they're already spending a tons of money uh, on their cloud uh, on their clouds and um, I want to uh, introduce you our product let me give you a very short uh, story before uh, before we'll show it to you we here at prophecy all, almost all of us are DevOps engineers and we're helping our customers to automate whatever we uh, we can and configure whatever we can and ac actually make everything cloud cost um, effective. And uh, uh, a lot of our customers started to ask us to, to, to do the cloud cost uh, optimization uh, for them. Um, and a year ago, um, we were doing it manually. We had an Excel file where, we, where you need to specify all of your resources. Then you take a look on it. On the pricing on those resources, then you're building the charts and graphs and trying to understand um, what you can do with those resources. Can you decrease them? Can you change the type of your instances? Or maybe you can change the whole architecture and so on, so on, so on. Uh, and then we saw that, okay, it's very painful and very slow to work like that. 
to collect all the resources that have customer has to the Excel and do the analysis of that. And we decided to write a couple of the scripts, which will help us to achieve that. And then those scripts become, become uh, a tool, then tool uh, become um, a portal, and then a portal become a startup. And now we have a startup that help, help us to do the cloud cost optimization for our customers. And we are willing to share this pro product with all of the DevOps engineers around the globe, um, free of you, free of charge. Um, we want DevOps engineers and managers to basically help to achieve the cloud cost optimization as much as possible. Um, so let me introduce our product, which is called the Prophecy Labs. It's an AI-based uh, multi-cloud uh, platform. Um, why uh, multi-cloud? Uh, because we are um, capable to uh, connect the AWS at the moment, and GCP is already in alpha. We're also going to the going to add the Azure really, really soon. Um, and our tool is helping to take a look on the cost, not only on one cloud, but on all clouds together, and also on the different accounts together. For example, you could have couple of AWS accounts, you can connect all of them together and you can take a look on uh, the what's the cost of your resources, uh, what amount of your resources and so on. Um, in our product, we decided to concentrate on four areas. As you will see, our product is not only about the FinOps, it's basically helping to everyone, to FinOps, DevOps, um, it's doing more than just the uh, cloud cost. So we decided to um to take our attention on four different areas first area which is the finops to do the um uh, to analyze manage and do the optimization of our close uh, cloud costs and also devops uh to uh, basically take a look on how many resources do we have what kind of resources do we have uh, details about those resources and so on uh, devsecops uh, we embedded the um, security tests in our portal um, and doing the um, security uh, vulnerability tests for your infrastructure, uh, checking uh, like uh, security groups, uh, checking that uh, MFA is enabled and so on. I will uh, go deep in that a little bit later. And we concentrated on visualization, means that we are giving uh, good visualization about your infrastructure. We are generating the um aws uh, for example for aws we're generating the diagrams with the resources the network diagrams with with the network um, network flow uh, and so on um next uh, cost management strategy so we in terms of uh, cloud cost optimization uh, at prophecy labs we um, uh, saw a couple of the couple of the opportunities first of all is the right sizing um, our uh, machine learning uh, algorithm is basically checking um, the current the current size of your resources and trying to understand if that size is is good or not uh, if it's like too big it's uh, our platform is giving the recommendations on what different type can be used in order to uh, achieve the cloud cost optimization uh, I will show you during the demo how it looks like. Also, in our product, we have the intelligent scheduled uh, spots. Um, it's, again, machine learning algorithm that's trying to, uh, to see the pattern when your spots are gone and trying to, to minimize this, this downtime. Um, as well as uh, we are um, capable uh, again, using our smart uh, smart schedule and our uh, machine learning models to uh, work with the stateful uh, and stateless uh, spots. Um, by the way, it's uh, it's pending the patent. It's our uh, patent because it's our development. Um, the smart scheduling and smart spotting is uh, is our own uh, um, is our own development and is waiting for patent. Uh, also, uh, we're giving the detailed cost analysis, showing uh, what kind of resources uh, are spending money, 
Uh, waste management is one of our features which showing you uh, totally wasted money, for example, unused volume or unused IP address uh, or some unused VPC. This is something that waste manager, our feature will show. Um, we also um, do the reserved instances and savings plans when our um, uh, platform is giving them uh, recommendations about the reserved instances and savings plans and um, helping you to save a lot of money for that. Um, moving next, um, cloud list, cloud map, cloud net. This is our features. Um, we'll show it during the demo. Uh, it's showing the resources, uh, details about resources. It's also generating you the cloud map, the diagram with all of your infrastructure. And the cloud net is generating the diagram, but from the networking perspective, showing how the traffic is 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 flowing into your uh, uh, infrastructure. As I mentioned to you, we are using machine learning based algorithms algorithms behind the the scenes, and uh, we're trying to leverage it machine learning as much as we as we could. For example, we're using the ML for spot pricing monitoring. The ML is, is monitoring the spot price and helps to be the uh, helps to make a bid. Um, and smart scheduling as well. We are providing the recommendations when the machine uh, or resource is actually used. When not, I will um, show it to you during the during the demo. Now the demo time. Let me share my screen just a second uh, so this is this is the prophecylabs.com this is our our product it's a ai based new uh, management cloud management platform uh, i already logged in going going down first of all what i see i see the dashboard on the dashboard i see that i have a multiple accounts already uh, here i can choose a couple of the accounts together it will show me a summary of all of them or i can go one by one I see the dashboard. On the dashboard, I see the map of, uh, of my uh, um, regions and availability zones uh, where my uh, infrastructure is actually uh, located. I see that some of them are red. It means that uh, not all of the resources are used. There are some of the resources that are unused, and we can uh, click on it. We can go deep inside, and we can take a look uh, what, are, what are those resources that are not used. On the right side, we have we see the billing summary. So I see the um, current amount of money spent by this uh, account. Also, we are showing the credits. Uh, this is the AWS account, by the way. We are showing the credits, something that AWS doesn't show. We're showing the credits and how much of them are spent. We are showing the savings, like how much you already saved, how much you could save if you will uh, perform all the suggestions. So. Right sizing, uh, really quickly. For example, we have this uh, EC2 instance, which is the POC Postgres instance. Um, our platform is saying that it's currently used on 20%, means of the resources, CPU and memory utilization. The type of this machine is M5 2X large. And our platform is saying that change it to M5 X large, make it two times less uh, uh, bigger. The usage will become 40%. But you will start. Uh, you will start saving eighty-six dollars dollars per per month, and you basically can apply right from here. You can click on modify. You can click apply. That's it. If you don't want to use this type, you can expand the list. You can choose different option, and again, you can uh, you can apply. Same for reservation. We have uh, reservation suggestions, and um, you can simply. Apply the suggestions, and for example, the RDS will become the reserved instance, and you will start paying paying less. Um, also, we have a feature which is called the Cloud Sitter. Cloud Sitter helps you to uh, shut down the machines per schedule, per policy. Um, I will give you again the uh, the example. Um, so you see there is this, the running and sleeping machine. So I can start start stop machines from here. Not only machines, also the databases, the uh, Kubernetes clusters, the auto scaling groups, the Redshift, a lot of services uh, uh, are supported. 
and I can create the policies. Like I can create a policy, for example, uh, night sleep, uh, shut down the resources during the during the night, and then they will be working on, only during the day. Mm, uh, so I can I can create uh, as many policies as I want. And also a feature we have a feature which is called the spot. I will show you just an example of one machine. Um, uh, for example, we have this machine which is called the training test. It's it's quite a huge machine. Uh, the on demand cost was seventeen thousand dollars per month, and when we spotted it, it basically currently costs only seven thousand, and it um, saving ten k dollars per month for our customer. Um, yeah, and the last but not least, which I mentioned to you. You can take a look on all of your resources within your um, account. Uh, you can uh, click on details. You can take a look on uh, the details of all the resource. This is uh, the NLB. Uh, you can take a look um, what ports are listening and so on, so on. And you can even click on the cloud map. It will generate you the map of your resources. Uh, everything is clickable. Uh, for example, we have this volume. I see the price of volume and I can remove the volume even from here if if I see that this volume is 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 uh, uh, not used. Um, probably that's it and CloudNet. Also, I mentioned it to you during the presentation that we are generating the map, uh, the network map based on the resources. And again, you can take a look on uh, all the details about uh, about it. Now let me get back to the presentation. Yeah. Um, so the uh, takeaways from here is uh, very simple. Um, our platform is built by DevOps engineers for DevOps engineers and anyone who wants to save some money on the, on your clouds. Currently we do support AWS and GCP is going to be uh, released for uh, for public really soon. The next one will be Azure. We are um, a uh, fast growing young startup built by DevOps engineers for DevOps engineers. Thank you. Questions, comments? Uh, thank you, uh, Anton. Uh, I have a question. We, we don't have much time, so uh, but uh, I have a personal question. Um, okay, for me, uh, FinOps is still not completely matured since a new concept uh, as DevOps was in the past. And it gathers very, a lot broad spectrum of skills uh, in DevOps, in finance, in the cloud, in data science, in programming and security, etc. Uh, how do you manage your, actually your organization and how do people uh, communicate with each other? How did you manage to uh, build your team? Oh, and uh, which of those skills you think are the most important? No, very good question. Thank you so much. Um, it, it's it's actually true. It's it's fast and growing young new thing, the new market. Uh, and of course, um, at the moment, it's not clear uh, what skills are more more better or more important for engineers. But I will I will give you some of the tips from based on my experience. Um, at the moment, basically, we are converting our DevOps engineers to FinOps engineers. So let's say we have a team of five engineers, and one of the DevOps within the team will be will be dedicated for FinOps work. It's one of the uh, patterns to do. Basically, DevOps who is familiar with the infrastructure, familiar with the cloud, familiar with the uh, with the pricing, will be dedicated for this role. Another thing that we are trying is basically. Um, engineer from the fin uh, from the financial field uh, so not from the cloud field or from devops okay. field the engineer from the financial field we are teaching him a cloud him or her we're teaching a cloud we are teaching um, uh, what are resources what kind uh, what kind of things you you should take a look on uh, and then this engineer is basically using our tools so and other tools you're probably familiar that there are a lot of different tools for FinOps available at the moment. And this engineer is, is, is basically taking care for FinOps. And this is our idea. Our idea is that the um, 
people for, with the financial background or economics background, uh, they actually do that. They're capable mm -hmm. to do the FinOps, especially if they, ha if they will have a proper tools, easy to use tools, not, not, not something that you need to, to, to know how to code or how to script. Okay, thank you for the clarification. I think it was a really important question. Uh, so thank you for your presentation, Anton, and uh, your participation. And uh, you're welcome. I wish you a good day. And thank you.